Hello and you're very welcome to the Rush Up to JMAC podcast. I'm John Man, and of course this podcast is sponsored by OrcaRetro.com and the fact that he using promo code JMAC podcast to get 15% off on OrcaRetro.com and get the best skins, gloves and equipment on Attack that he be attack minded. And if you're liking what you're seeing, like and subscribe on YouTube because the sport has been absolutely brilliant so far. And today I'm joined by former Cross McGlynn and our math Johnny Hatt, Johnny Morta uh, to talk about his uh, career, the COVID situation and his uh, current job with Casablanca Falls in the modern club. Uh, football scene so uh, delighted to have Johnny uh, today so Johnny how are you keeping? Good John good thanks all Good, good sir. oh yeah all good all good I, I'm uh, licking my wounds after you fed us last Thursday in the McKenna Cup Johnny how dare you <laughs> yeah well it was a, a, just about got over the line at the end um, there wasn't a lot in it he's probably miss, he's missing off a lot of chances so we start off start off with a bang I suppose yeah yeah no it was it was definitely a good win for you, um, and one you should be uh, delighted with, I suppose, and a good win for uh, Kieran McGee to start off the year. Um, and obviously, um, the goal at the end, uh, Reno Lee's wee flick, bit of genius play. So, were you impressed by the Armagh performance, Johnny? I was, yeah. Um, we, well, obviously, both teams are, are, are uh, strong enough outfit out, so um, it's good to see the guys. The guys look to be in good shape and good enough spirits. It was a tough night for football, but... Yeah, I definitely enjoyed Rain's wee flick off the off the ground. Um, I think it's circulating right around the country you now at this stage. So uh, yeah, look at I don't know what happened to the goalkeeper though. I don't know where he went, but uh, <laughs> yeah, um, look at it. it was it was good. It's good. It's good for Geezer to start off with a win. Um, and he's going to need something similar now to start off in Division One. You know. 100% Johnny, 100%. I suppose what impressed you most about the Armour performance in all these early days, it's only the McKenna Cup and we're only a week or two into the season Johnny, but what impressed you I suppose about the important performance, was it the shooting, was it I suppose O'Neill's performance and or just an all round team performance because obviously you know Cavan definitely did put it up uh, to Armagh, maybe Cavan probably had the better second half but um, maybe Armagh had the work done in the first half, but what impressed you I suppose mostly about the performance Johnny? Well it was good to see a couple of players back, I was, I was, it was uh, great to see young Ross McQuillan back uh, with Armagh. Um, there was a couple of guys stood out, you know. There were some nice points taken at different times. Low enough score in the first half and sort of exploded out of the blocks the second half. Um, but I did feel both teams, you know, had a good enough run out. You know, would you read that much into to McKenna Cup at, in, in this time of the year? Uh, obviously not, you know, but um, look at it. Relatively pleased with a good start. Um, It'll, it'll be all about Division One and, and and how we can progress there. Uh, stayed up last year and and we'll be looking for more of the same and 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 to push on a wee bit. Um, I've been very impressed with 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 Kieran Donaghy. I think he's he sort of give our forward line um, a new lease of life in there. You know a wee bit of know how and and the guys seem to be adapting real well to him. So I'm really pleased with his uh, with his sort of contribution from last year and. Hopefully, be more of the same this year. You know, big year for our man Johnny. Um, obviously, Division One again this year, and, and a open round game against uh, Donegal in the championship. So that'll not be easy. But one our man should really look forward to Johnny. But a massive year for Kieran McGeaney. Obviously, Kieran McKeever's in the background team as well. Kieran Donaghy, Johnny, we all know about that man and his um, I suppose medals he's won and career that he's had to date. So, uh, Johnny, it's it's a huge uh, year for the Armagh footballers. And I suppose, uh, Johnny, what to look forward to. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, it was a scorching hot day in, in over in the Marshes in Uri. Uh, we were playing man in there last year. Um, we were at it, you know, so we were very unlucky that day. We were without the keeper, uh, the sub keeper in, you know. So, look at that. I know, I know anything can happen in Championship and, and these things can happen from time to time. But, uh, you know, I think a, a massive thing for, for, for Armagh was staying in Division 1. Yeah. You know, so that's just even cementing your place there um, and getting guys with, with time under their belt at the top level, you know, again, all the top teams, you know, that's the only way you're going to progress. <coughs> Probably, you know, we were, we were a good few years there where we weren't in Division 1 um, and it's just not the same 
we, we, we struggled we struggled to win championship games, you know, when we weren't competing at the top table, you know. So um I, I we look at we have a good young team coming through. They're gonna need a wee bit more work, probably a wee bit more strength and depth, but I definitely think uh Geezer and, and Kieran Kieran McKeever uh, and Kieran Donny is, is definitely moving in the right direction. Um and look at I'd be I'd be as critical as anybody you you know with Arma over the years, you know, as a next man, but um no, I, I I definitely think they're in good spirits now and they're playing a nice nice brand of football that seems to fit. You know, so I'm looking forward to seeing a few games this year. Is the time now, Johnny? Obviously, because we we have seen obviously Tyrone's massive su- success last year, winning the All Ireland and bits and pieces. And by God, Armagh definitely have the players to lead them forward now, Johnny. So is this maybe the year to maybe get your hand hands back in that Anglesell title? Obviously, haven't won one since 2008. So is is this year the year, Johnny? Maybe potentially next year. I know there is a lot riding on it this year for McGee uh, Kieran because I think this is apparently his last year, Johnny. So it, it is is the time now for this Armagh team, Johnny? Well, you know. Can you put a time on it? You know, it's it's. I think, you know, you, you have to you have to be willing to compete at the top table, and and our man is doing that. You know, so once you're competing up there, once you're competing the, the Donegal's, the Thrones, you know, and 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 also the Monans, you know, once you're up there competing, you can't really ask for anything else. You know, it's all on the day after that. Um, like I said, we we a lot of the young guys have got the experience over the last couple of years. You know, at to, to to be honest, you know, it's going to be daunting enough to take on Donegal, you know, in the championship. You know, they've when you look at them, they'll have time to freshen up. They'll have time to get Murphy fully fresh. Uh, probably carrying a couple of niggles last year, you know. So, and they were on the perform last year in the championship for the for a massive county and pick and strength and depth that they have, you know. So, it could be a bit of a wounded animal. Um. Our man will not fear them, that's that's for sure. So, you know, uh, uh, it's going to be a humdinger of a game and so, it's definitely one I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to. Absolutely, absolutely. I think the, the league will be uh, great for momentum. And obviously, a trip to Croke Park, uh, first for the Armagh footballers in the league, Johnny, against the Mighty Dubs. And obviously, Dublin actually did play a very strong team against um, Offaly last weekend in the O'Boro Cup in Kirk Kenny and Niall Scully were playing in that game, Johnny. So, that's even an exciting game in itself and not a bad way to start, Johnny. No, a brilliant way to start. You know, um, good for Geezer and the lads to get a nice handy one in Crow Park for the first <laughs> game, you know. so. <laughs> and uh, when we're talking about wounded animals, um, you know, the dubs is going to be another one. Um, probably the hangover last year, you know. I I definitely would have seen something similar with, with Cross Midland, you know, that when you went so many years, you know, eventually it gets to the stage where you need a break, you need to freshen up. You know, you could have a situation here where you have Dublin, you know, uh, has got the chance to freshen up again, got a wee bit more hungry. Um, and again, look at the, 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 the strength and depth that they have. It's phenomenal. You know, even though Kill McCudd's going to be in probably an All Ireland club semi final or whatever it is, you know, Paul Mannion. Whatever the situation is with him, whether he's back, whether he's not, he's not back at the minute. Clock O looks to be retired. Um, you know, so but the quality that Dublin has is phenomenal, you know. So look at it it I don't think it'll it'll be the end of the world for Arma one way or the other, what happens in, in the big thing in the National League is just about staying up mm. um and competing and getting yourself ready for championship. That's what it's all about, you know. Yes, it'd be lovely to win a national league, a national title coming to Arma would be would be phenomenal. But it wouldn't be the be all and end all for Geezer, you know. So um, he'd be looking to get a good foothold in, in the Ulster Championship, um, and that's the one he'd be looking at first. He'd be taking each each game as it comes, one game at a time. So look at it; it's 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 exciting again to be an Arma fan. We always have good supporters, a lot of supporters, you know. So. It's exciting time, and like I said, we can't wait to get going to a few games now this year. I'm really looking forward to it. Exactly, Johnny. I think you're speaking for the masses with that. It'd be great to get back out and about for all these games, Johnny, and uh, to do a full uh, calendar of fixtures as well, Johnny. So that's an exciting uh, prospect itself. And just uh, you're touching on Stephen Clarkson there. It was a uh, nice. 
off and let us know that he retired, Johnny. <laughs> oh well, you know, Clucko, Clucko is Clucko. You know, he's a, he's a he's a personal man. You know, and and his business is his business. I suppose that's the way he operates. You know, and you know what? He, he's a, he's the best I ever seen. So whatever's working for him, let him keep it at it. You know, so happy out. 100% Johnny 100% each to their own as I say Johnny uh, yourself personally you're managing the uh, Castlevania uh, footballers down there in Monaghan so what's that experience like Johnny obviously uh, Monaghan football very high standard at the minute uh, Bonte McEnany over the Monaghan senior footballers too so exciting times uh, Liam Sheedy's gone into uh, the backroom team down there as well so that's obviously going to be a very interesting uh, one uh, one we can maybe discuss later on but uh, Johnny are you, are you enjoying your experience with the Castlevania lads at the minute? Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very lucky to be involved with Castle Blaney. You know, the the an unbelievable amount of tradition, uh, powerhouse in modern football for for generations. You know, so look at it. It's it's a it's a big job. It's a big gig. Uh, I probably maybe got to senior level, um, maybe a year earlier than than probably I wanted, but uh, last year. But look at you can't help the way things sort of pan out. Sometimes I was. I done two two years of man at, at junior. Um, I probably I done one year intermediate. I probably would have liked to do another and then then move to senior and you know just just learn how you how you can deal and adapt and and learn as you go along. You know I want to start at the bottom and work my way up. So, um, but I have to say uh, it's been a very positive year last year, uh, moving in the right direction. A lot of young players coming through the club and and um, but. I have to say as well, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky to be blessed with a great committee. No crazy expectations, you know. Um, but like I said to the lads and the committee, um, you know, that was probably fine last year to get a foothold again and get the thing swung around, you know, to where you wanted it. Um, but I would be expecting Blaney now to push on. I'd be expecting the lads to push on. Uh, and you know, you, 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 for whatever which reason you want to say, I'll be making no secret about it. Uh, we'll be going right after Scottsdale this year. Uh, I, I honestly believe, I could be wrong, but I honestly believe if there's one team in Mullen that's going to, that's going to stamp Scottsdale out, it is going to be Castle Blaney. That has been to the tradition, you know, and they do have that on their side. They do have the young players coming through won three minors there in a row, you know, so the stuff is coming. Uh, I think it was all fine and well. Probably went in under the radar a wee bit and, you know, people would have said last year, last couple of years, Blaney would have been maybe favourites to go down to intermediate. Uh, I do believe the guys have turned the corner now. Um, they're putting in the hard yards, they're putting in the work. Uh, and I'm very, uh, I'm blessed to have a real good bunch of honest fellas. I couldn't speak highly enough of them. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see where the year is going. I can't wait to get back at it again, John. Definitely, Johnny. Definitely. And obviously, are you enjoying the kind of management end of things, Johnny? Because you did play for Crossbow Glen and Armagh for a number of years, Johnny. So we, I suppose, you, you, we were talking off air about it, but are you enjoying the responsibility of it, the time that goes into it, and obviously your football mad, Johnny. So uh, that, that's obviously that that's what I get from you straight away, Johnny. So are you enjoying it all, I suppose? Oh, I love it. Uh, I absolutely love it. Um, it look, it, it does. Don't get me wrong. As we said off air, it takes up a massive amount of time. Um, sometimes the misses be given out, but look at uh, <laughs> you know it, it's the same as that, and you know. But look at the game; the game has evolved. It's more tactical now than ever it was. You know, from from the amount of guys that's involved now with a senior setup, you know, is five and six and seven men from strength conditioning coaches, the uh, GPS systems. You have your you use GPS uh, down the one or the Casablanca is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, GP, yeah right. GP, your GPS systems, your video analysis, you know, somebody has to strip that data down. I'm very lucky that the Castle Blaney has, has, has guys and the right guys in place within the club to help me out in so many levels. So, you know, I couldn't ask for anything more. Um, it's a professional setup and we're very lucky to have it. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I've, I've, I've managed to bring uh, to bring Paul McEntee from Cross Midland. Um, and as me starting conditioning coach this year going forward. So 
Uh, Paul has, has a couple of all Ireland medals himself. Um, and he has good background and the know-how on, on, on not just doing it in, in the gym, but transferring that onto the pitch, which I think is very important in, in, in to having a balance between the two. Mm-hmm. Uh, I definitely, uh, one thing I learned from playing up in Dublin uh, when I was up there with Parnells was that the, the, the conditioning and the guys uh, across the board in Dublin club football was was streets ahead, was phenomenal. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's 10 years ago. You know, club, club, most club players weren't, weren't doing strength conditioning the same, you know, weren't adapting to it. You know, you, you, you have guys lifting and lifting and lifting weights in the gym. Next thing, they broke down injured. You know, you need to have that balance. Mm. Um, you need to have the balance into doing a certain amount of gym work and then transferring that onto the pitch, you know, and, yeah, and yeah, being yeah. smart, be, being smart in the way it's done, you know. So, yeah, um, yeah look at him. I'm, I'm loving all the aspects of managing. Um, I've, you know, I've, I've, I've top class coaches in there with me as well. Of Dermot McCardle there, you play with Monon, phenomenal coach, defensive units, you name it. Uh, he can set them up. He can, he's, he, he, he's, he really is top draw, you know. So, Castle Blaney is lucky to have the caliber of that man within the club and, and someone that's given back, you know. So, it's, it, it's great, you know, I'm excited. How much time goes into it all, Johnny? Because obviously, like from from being a player and kind of watching on, uh, like from a manager's point of view. But how much time does go into it, Johnny? Because we obviously, as you were kind of saying, the GPS figures you're looking at that, you're monitoring lads. And I know the WhatsApp group culture that's in the GA at the minute, so that's even has its own kind of responsibilities and bits and pieces like that, <laughs> and setting out runs and everything that comes with it, Johnny. So like you know, obviously you, you are loving it, but like how much time really goes into? Because obviously when you're training the lads, I presume they're coming home, right? Who done well? training you're getting on to your selectors you're doing this so it's it's it, um, a lot goes into it Johnny essentially the, uh, people have no idea you, you, like even players players would have no idea player you know it's easy for a player he he, he, he grabs his bag whatever it is he turns up he does his training you know he, he grabs his food and he's away home at the door you know uh, the coaching the coaching aspect of things and the management and you know maybe Certain players could have different, different, different things uh, going on in their lives that they need to help them out with. You know, you might need to meet someone for a coffee. You know, chat things out. You, you know, you have different. That's only with players. Then you have the same. Then going on with with coaching and your video analysis and going through players and going through systems and breaking down all that data and looking through it. And you know, so it's a minefield. Um, and you can you can spend any amount of hours at it, you know. It all depends on what you want to throw at it. Um, I probably would have found that the preseason, you know, the off season, as you say, for a player, or a player can can rest and you know can 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 chill out. You know, um, when you're involved in senior club, it 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 doesn't stop. You know, from whatever research you're doing to sorting things out for the for the new year coming, you know, working on different things and looking at your analysis over the year, um, looking at some stuff, maybe things you made mistakes. You know, you have to look at that, calculate them up. You know, different aspects improve your game. Uh, looking at other sports, you know, um, all these wee things, any wee edge, you know. I would be a firm believer in, in, in the, if you really want to move forward, you do it in small steps throughout the year, one step at a time. You know, small movements, small gains, um, and make it consistent. You know, so that's that's sort of what we what we're trying to inspire to now at the minute, John. Hundred percent, John. Obviously, kind of what uh, management style do you like to kind of give across to lads? Because obviously, we we see much so much going into management, and lads maybe not getting away with stuff and. It varies bits and pieces like that, Johnny, and uh, there obviously is so much that goes into it, Johnny, but what kind of style of management would you kind of like to see you bring across to the lads? Like, do you kind of feel like you're a player manager? Do you get on with the lads and kind of let them do their bits and pieces? And then obviously when it comes to championship, get serious? Or, you know, what kind of style are we bringing to the table, Johnny, if you get me? Yeah, well, I would be, I would, I would be, um, I'd be just pretty firm with the lads, you know. I, I wouldn't, I don't believe in drink bands, <laughs> as you'd probably be surprised to learn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but 
uh, look at I, I wouldn't I, I don't like to create a problem for myself that there is no need to you know if the guys are working hard and 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 I know by the way they're, they're training and they're playing you know any any uh, any manager you know any decent manager should know where his players is majority of the time I'm lucky I do um I have the right guys around me to make sure that happens you know so the guys are honest with me and I'll be honest with them that, you know, that's the way it is. You know, starting off, you know, we, we, we had a good win uh, in the championship this year. I did manage to get an hour, an hour and a half socialising with the guys and having a bit of crack, seeing them in that environment, seeing what way they carry themselves. Mm. I wouldn't make a habit of it. Um, but it was good just to do it for a wee bit of team bonding, you know, different things like that. Um, you know, so... But uh, look at uh, that'd be the sort. I'd be firm when I need to be firm. If the guys aren't working hard, or maybe one or two of them, there's certain issues. But other than that, uh, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be a guy for the players. Um, and I believe in man management or meeting the guys if there's something wrong. I think it's very important. Yeah. I don't think it's, I don't think it's done enough by managers. You know, some managers would be pretty old school. Um, Maybe would be of the opinion like, also, what do you need to tell him that for? He, what does he need to know? You know, uh, he should know himself. But no, I, I, I believe in a bit of feedback. Obviously, feedback from 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 my own panel uh, towards the management is very important to where we can learn and what we can do going forward, mm. and, and 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 vice versa. You know. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Man management and uh, simple communication, Johnny. I think that's. Uh, Speaks volumes uh, when you're managing the team, but looks things, Johnny. And obviously, uh, touching on to yourself, um, with Cross McLean and Armagh, you have 11 county titles with Cross McLean, um, with seven Ulster club titles, and uh, one All Ireland title. So, very impressive uh, CV with the uh, Cross McLean footballers, Johnny. We all know about the tradition in football with Cross McLean. We've seen the documentary a couple of years ago, Thomas Nibblock done with BBC, an absolutely tremendous watch. I think everyone should get their eyes on it, Johnny. So, it's a, it's a it's a fantastic club up there in our match, Johnny. Yeah, yeah, but you know we've we've been unlucky there the last couple of years now in in, in uh, the county championship. You know, especially in the last one there, you know, last kick of the ball or whatever, as 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 uh, as took one off us. You know, so uh, we're probably giving out a wee bit of charity um, for the last couple of years. Um, but look at cross, it is hard to take. Um, Definitely this year was extremely hard to take, uh, you know, but Cross will be back again, you know. Probably players uh, changed, as we said off air there, you know, there's a wee bit of change in style and personnel. Um, I felt that we, we probably missed a wee bit of a generation of a couple of players there that, the, you know, might have been fit to hold the thing together for the next couple of years till a few more gets of age, you know. We spoke about Jamie. You have probably Jamie and maybe Francis Hannity, Aaron Coynham, Dave McKenna. Um, you know, we're probably for whatever, which couple of different reasons we 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 just didn't have them players. Um, which which I think would have bridged that gap. You know, so listen, the the the, the team at the minute is very much in transition. Um, and all be an extremely extremely young team. Um, you know, so it 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 isn't easy. Uh, okay, yes, we're competing in a couple of championship finals, and that's great. But you know, the old yard is is has stepped away. Most of the Marins probably left. You know, so listen, that that day was always going to come. You, you you can't, no matter who you are, no matter what team you are, you you, you can't keep competing at the top forever. Uh, and that transition. You know, it's going to be there. Players, you know, players have so much going on now in, in, in outside of football in their lives. You know, there's so much going on. It's not the same as when we were that age. You know, I know you'd nearly say, oh, geez, you're old. You know what I mean? But it it, mm. it, it, it really is different, you know. So, like, I had have, I have friends down there in, in Dr. Crooks and Kerry, and, and it's a place, you know, only there for, for COVID at Christmas there and stuff. You know, I, I would go down there a couple of times a year. I was down there in the summer at the Munster final. 
Um, and we normally, myself and ourselves, would normally head down around Christmas, you know, and, and uh, I'd be chatting to, to some of them players as well that we, you know, we bet them in an all Ireland club final. Um, and I'd be chatting to different Crooks players and, and stuff like that there, and they'd be telling me the same thing, you know, they have... They haven't won a they haven't won a senior championship in in a, in a couple of years as well, you know. So, mm. and they'd be asking the questions, and and it's much it's much the same. It doesn't matter what area you're in, whether it's down there or up here, you know. The, the thing doesn't go on forever. It has to evolve. There has to be change, and there will be change. And listen, Cross is just going through that transition at the minute. Um, but uh, I can I can see us being back at the top table, uh, hopefully very soon, you know. I'd say the other clubs in Armagh is probably enjoying this quiet spell for you because <laughs> many years it was very uh, cross oriented. But uh, what a team, Johnny! Um, like and all the success that you did have across McGlen and geez, numerous county titles, uh, seven of the club medals, and that they all Ireland you did tag on, Johnny. Like you know, th- th- that's that's serious going. Yeah, yeah. Look at it, but look at it. <coughs> you have to be very realistic and look into the caliber of the team that we had. You know, we. We just a serious, serious backbone, you know, and I suppose, you know, when I look, when I actually look back at the teams, um, when I look back at the team that I, I that I started off, you know, when the, I I was just before my seventeenth birthday, um, uh, I won my first championship medal across, um, you know, so when you look back at that team, when I look at how how big and mobile they were. Uh, the football they played and then I suppose a few years later we transitioned the team into more of a running team um, you know and then Ashin sort of moved from being in the half forward line in, in corner forward you know I moved out from being in starting off in the corner to me swapping with Ashin out, out to the wing um, out to number 12 you know so different things like that you know that's one thing that, that that Cross was fit to do. We were fit to change up our style to the personnel we had. Um, and then when 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 Tony when Tony McIntyre was over the team, you know that they, they totally were complete uh, running team, strong, hard power runs. Mm. You know, phenomenal, phenomenal speed and and and. Mixing that cross field ball and guys coming at serious speed, you know. So they they took it to a new another level after that again. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when when I did find myself when I came back from being away, and I, when I got back into that game, um, I would have been back into the full forward line again, playing at full forward and, and seeing that game, that same game, that moving that that was so enjoyable game to play. At moving that ball at so much speed, um, that kick pass and their defence and diagonal balls and you know it 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 was a sight to behold. Um, but I find now that the game is a the game has evolved again. The style has changed, not only because of the the rules, um, but you know the game's got very tactical. It's got mm-hmm. very tactical off the start. Of the you know from the goalkeeping strategies on kickouts to the teams going putting on a high press on you, how does your team adapt to that? You know these these are things in which we, we didn't have an issue with um, over over twenty or twenty five year period. Now we're seeing teams and even good club teams is 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 putting on this sort of pressure. Um, so it's it's real intriguing to see how good top clubs can adapt to it. You know, mm. a prime a prime example of what they're talking about there is like a Kilku. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, Kilku on paper, you know, on paper in my eyes, Kilku's forwards wouldn't be near the caliber across Midlands forwards, but they're sure. fit to util- they're fit to utilize the forwards a lot better than we are. Yeah, you know, like they were kind of up and down the pitch, Johnny. Are you talking yeah. kind of to play that bit deeper? They're, like I, I watched them against Rammer, uh, the the Cavan Club team that they just wiped the floor with in Breffney, and they just 
transition, you know, up and down the pitch. Obviously, I know Conor Gilligan probably has a lot to answer for on that, and uh, Conor Laffey's obviously on the field to play, but like, that's sort of all over the place is what you're kind of saying, Johnny. Like, not that six or seven a point game, Oshie McConville, Johnny Morty kind of type of player is what you're saying, is it? Yeah, it's a, it's a, the, the fit the, the fit the player to the system, um, and and we did speak of this off air that you know to a certain extent and even in county football like like teams have got very robotic. Um, yeah, you know, and Kiku Kiku has their system, their style of play. You know, Kiku probably went. You know, when we were competing against Kiku, they went through a stage where it would have been all heart, wore the heart in their sleeve, real hard, honest. You know, tight. You know, really get into your face. Um, that grit and determination, that bit of steel, like it or not, you know, uh, and different aspects of it. Yes, did they overstep the line? Of course, they did at times. But all's fair in love and war. So, I have no issue with that at all. Um, you know, so they've, they've they've now adapted. They've got so much smarter at the game. They've mm-hmm. no they know exactly what's for them, what's not. Um, I've been super impressed with them now, so I have this time round. Um, Do the remind like like because I I tweeted not so long ago saying like I wouldn't say like the new cross, but is there any kind of similarities with like when you were in your absolute pomp, winning everything? Like, is this current Kiku team? Is there any kind of what am I kind of saying? Kind of comparisons, I suppose, between yourselves and themselves. No, I, I wouldn't with success, say with the success maybe. Or, well, not even with the success, you know. There's, there's probably the only, the only club that the only club you're looking to really success wise is would be Corfin. Um, mm. you know, at that at that, at that level for a period, you know, not even that period of time, you know. I wouldn't say it's like that. Um, do I think the club football has tapered off a wee bit? Yeah, I, I don't. It's not just as competitive as it was, you know. In saying that, you know, um, there could be a couple of reasons for that. Obviously, COVID, COVID being one of them. Yeah. You know, for example, and and to be brutally honest, the the standard of football wasn't bad this year, considering the year that the poor club player had. So, you know, um, but back to Kilku, they're they're very very adaptable. That, that's what I like about Kilku. The the they're very adaptable to to, to certain scenarios, um, mm. and they give you absolutely everything that they have, mm. uh, and they're very good at u- utilizing, you know, utilizing what they do have, what they have to work with, and playing to their strengths. Um, and what the, that'd be one of the things I, I'll be I'll be very impressed with Kilku. Obviously, mm. you know, with the guys that's over them, Conor Gilligan and, and and Mickey, you know, they're these phenomenal, smart, smart. Connor is a top class coach. You know, mm-hmm. on this play, played against them at club level too. You know, understands the game inside out. Yeah. You know, very astute. You know, so um, I've been I've been really impressed with the way they've been set up. Their strategies from kickouts. You know, they probably went through a stage. I felt Kiku for a couple of years was extremely boring. They've now they've, they've now reversed that into utilizing and moving forward as a unit. Yeah. And the and they're playing the ultimate team game. I feel at the minute. Yeah. And one another aspect, uh, I've been super impressed with Jerome Johnson. Uh, Class. I think I think I think he has just hit his prime spot bang on at the minute, and he is playing phenomenal football. Uh, and and real joy to watch. So direct, um, you know. And and I've I've known Jerome over the years, and and uh, he's he, he's a nice young lad, you know. So he's uh, when he's in that form, he's extremely hard to stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, th- th- I just think it was a really, really impressive performance against Rammer, and you nearly feel like that it had another thirty-five minutes in them. Like obviously, you know, they probably blew us out of the water. The Cavan team, it's up to Cavan kind of club teams to kind of get up to that sort of standard. And it will take a couple of years, Johnny. But it was just such an impressive performance. They just had so much in their legs, really. They could just keep going. The Brannigan brothers are just could run all day, Johnny. So, are we looking at all Ireland favourites here? It's look at. <laughs> It's hard to say. Um, it's hard to say for so many reasons. You know, 
you need a you need a bit of luck. You need it all depends how you get over Christmas. Um the All Ireland Club is it's tight. It's uh like I said, you have to be lucky over Christmas, you know. A simple thing that you wouldn't even think of, you know, I, I got pneumonia uh, over Christmas one time coming, then trying to get ready for an all Ireland club on the back end of that. Mm-hmm. You know, so you don't know you could have players struck with COVID, unlucky to get maybe sick, you know, maybe trying to get themselves back fit. Mm-hmm. You know, you have so many different issues over Christmas, over the winter, uh, and to carry that train right through. Um, to prepare yourself for 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 an All Ireland uh, club series, you know. So you have all them different aspects. So I think to pick a favourite out of it, you know, obviously Kilku, uh, they'll be going in as favourites. Um, they're definitely going to be favourites coming from Ulster. Uh, if they get over the line, um, but I don't know. Kilmacud's going to be hard to put away. I think uh, Dublin Dublin clubs have have have, have been very very uh, strong in that All Ireland uh, club as well. So did you see Kilmacud Saturday night against Nice? Did you see? I did. What yeah. was the verdict on them? Because I know mine is Paul Mannion, and then obviously I don't know is Mannion going to be okay for the semi final? Like we're waiting to hear of that. But like you know, was a good enough performance. I know they probably had the work done the first half and. Because in Nace's second half was very bad, but overall Nace were probably very poor. But uh, were you impressed with Kilmacud on Saturday night, say Johnny? I look at I was impressed enough with them, you know, they were playing at home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> home the them, so, um, but uh, look at um, I thought uh, that's that's one that's one of the things I couldn't figure out why the, why the game is in Crow Park, but Part you know, that's yeah, sure. yeah uh, at uh, wide open pitches. You know, yeah. I thought I thought it was absolutely crazy, um, you know. So, but look, I think I, I think you know, being brutally honest about the thing, uh, Nice had a phenomenal year, um, yeah, of course it is, especially yeah. especially for the situation that they were put in, you know. So they did have a phenomenal year, but there were there were massive massive underdogs going in, you know, going into the like uh, the Lions Den to take on the caliber of the. You know, even though Kill McCord had tapered off the last few years, but you know, I tell you who I was super impressed um, with Rory O'Carroll at full back. Brilliant. Um, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, it was just like you know, um, for a, for an aspect of that game at times, it was it was just like the real old days where it was like it was like throwing scones into the bear and in, in, in a full back with the high balls coming in. You know, so <laughs> um, you nearly forget to because like, there is so much talk about Mannion uh, when it comes to Kilmacud. Like Rory Carroll, like he obviously represented Dublin for so long. He is an extremely good footballer, and you nearly forget to mention him any time you're previewing, say, like a Kilmacud game, uh, Johnny. Yeah, well, here I tell you, you don't have to tell me. Um, I came up again him in in '09 in a. Uh, when they won the all Ireland, they bet us in the all Ireland final, club final in 09, and yeah, and, uh, and Rory, Rory didn't give me a kick of it. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So look, you don't have to tell me, but uh, you know this, you know, Diaz in, in in midfield there as well. He was playing, you know, like they do have caliber, they do have guys with all Ireland with all Ireland club medals in their pocket. Yeah. Um, they've they've guys with a lot of county experience as well. You know, obviously the situation with Paul Mannion, uh, I believe maybe he's got a knee operation. Um, that seems to be the word on the street, but uh, I'm not sure what way he is. But you know, if 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 Paul if Paul Mannion is out, uh, and I believe on his day he's probably one of the top the top corner forwards in the country. Um, yeah. Yeah. If he's out, it would give any team a chance. Uh, I definitely I definitely put it to you that way. Yeah. Yeah. Home game, home game or not? <laughs> <laughs> take him, take him down to bloody Longford yeah. or par, I don't know Pierce, Pierce Park or so, some uh, stage in the middle of nowhere, Johnny. But uh, no, I still think uh, yeah, uh, Paul Mannion, if he is fit for the semi final, will be interesting. But still, it was a very good uh, performance with Kilmacud on Saturday. Um, I think it was it was a very uh, kind of uh, well timed performance as well. So we wait and see. They're Leicester champions anyway, Johnny. They're not complaining. And um, and touch back to yourself uh, with Cross the Glen, Johnny. Um, like I suppose the cow enjoyable was it over the years to play. For like for like for a team like Ross McLean because we've seen the documentary a couple of years ago the winning culture winning habits 
and um, playing with the likes of Ar- the Karen brothers, Oshie McConville and uh, Jamie Clark, Ari Cunningham to ma- name a few, Johnny, like um, really good days for yourself. Yeah, yeah, look, I suppose um, it's only really when you look back uh, on reflection uh, or, or I suppose when when you, <laughs> like you, John, maybe throws a question like that at me that you would actually think um, you, you, you know, I suppose one thing I did was probably took it for granted. You think it's going to last forever, uh, yeah, and it's not. Um, I did mention the off I I, uh, I made the best decision of my life, and I went and done a, a rehabilitation program over five years ago. Now, um, and to be brutally honest, you know, I wish I had done it in my earlier twenties. You know, as I said to you that. Then I would have understood a lot more. I, I, I found myself that I, I had done it too late. And to understand myself and never mind anybody else, um, it, would be, it would have left myself in a better position. And I definitely felt I enjoyed my football. Uh, I ended up playing you know, for cross intermediate team. We were playing intermediate championship. And I probably felt that I enjoyed my football most that year when I had my head raised. Yeah. I got myself straightened out, um, you know, so, you know, I said, somebody asked me down the country, you know, uh, like I said, I, uh, I'm very fond of Kerry, I go down to Kerry a lot, and, and uh, I was asked down there, one by another, another guy uh, happened to say to me about, about the, the gambling and stuff like that, and, you know, that game with Kill McCoy Crooks, for example, uh, Bellis and All Ireland final, uh, Cheltenham was on the same time. Right. Um, and I seen me, I, I, I actually cared more on the bus about what the fuck was going on in Cheltenham than, 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 than the All Ireland club final. Do you think that's, and, do you know the way with Rory O'Carroll, do you think that maybe impacted your performance? Oh, no, it's nothing to do with Rory O'Carroll, you know, but I, I'm just saying, or that was that on the day, like did that impact on your performance? Because if you were thinking about that on the way up, do you think that impacted your performance, or was was that just different? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's. I wouldn't say impacted performance or whatever. You're you're just in, in some ways maybe it was a good thing for taking your mind off it, or right. but I, you know in some ways maybe it wasn't. You know it 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 it. You just. You're not fully functioning and all there, um, right. and then, then you go through a stage then where you're going to kill the pain, um, you know, and then you would hold regret and and and. But the big, the biggest thing I found about about addiction problem was that you're you. You're so forgetful in your own head, yeah. you know. There's big big games. That I can't even remember playing in. And yeah. that's not a word of a lie. But I cannot you, remember playing big games. When you say because, kill the pain kill the pain, what are we talking? Like you you put on another bet, is it? Or is it or is it what? Oh yeah. Yeah, it, w- it would actually get to the stage where it didn't matter the bet. You know, the bet it didn't matter the bet won or lost. There's no enjoyment in it. It was it was it was it was it was over, you know, and this the the sheer sense of loneliness with the whole thing was uh, you, you wouldn't believe it was it was it was the loneliest you, you could ever feel in your life um you know and then i seen me maybe going maybe just looking an excuse to get into a pub on, on on a friday night you know if we weren't training just going in you're only going in because you're back and horses in, in dundalk or whatever happened or yeah. That's the only reason, you know. Um, you know, so it's it's you, you you go through a phase of of absolute craziness, um, you know. So what I found about the football on the tail end of that, that's why that's why I was saying to you that I wished if I had it went in my early twenties, and maybe I might have been too young to get it. That could be a thing as well, but. Um, to understand that aspect of, of, of potentially where you could have been, what what 
what maybe more could have given me my own club looking mm. back because it would have been so much regret. Um, some of the players, I suppose, as well, would have probably had, had, had regret towards me uh, because of the way I stepped away. Um, you know, but, he, but every player's got their own problems and issues and stuff going on. And nobody knows exactly what's going on in anybody's head, you know. And we, I suppose, look, even looking at my own club at the minute, you know, we have a situation, um, obviously a big court case situation going on in the club at the minute. So the likes of a small issue like mine is 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 very small compared to what 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 some guys uh, actually had to put up with from within, you know. So yeah. I suppose in in, in that way. In that regard, we can be lucky, you know, and, and um, look at them. I managed to get myself on the straight and narrow and I'm doing something that I enjoy and giving back again. And, you know, hopefully from what I learned um, on, on, on probably some of my downfalls, uh, I think that's what that's what makes me the perfect candidate for for. But giving back towards my own players uh, going forward, you know. Yeah, yeah. I suppose, uh, Johnny. When did you realise you probably needed help with your kind of gambling, uh, kind of addiction or problem? Like, and I suppose you're obviously playing away for Cross McLean, and maybe football was maybe used as, as a distraction for you. Maybe that kind of escapism from the bookies or the betting kind of situation, Johnny. But when did you feel like this is a real problem, and you know, I need a bit of help with this? Probably, um, probably a bit. Eight years ago, maybe um, I can't see what have run away from me problems. Whether that would have been running away to New York uh, in you know the start of the recession, um, I ran away there from me problems. You know, then I couldn't face reality out there either. I was working as a barman. You know, it was easy for me to put big bets on out there. You know, playing cards. You know different things like that too. You know, but it 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 brings you into cra- crazy scenarios, crazy places, meeting crazy people. Yeah. Um, from 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 playing from playing the uh, Texas Hold'em, you know, in in different places in New York and casinos to even play the the World Poker Series in 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 Vegas. Um, you know, so it's 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 you could end up anywhere in gambling. It's a crazy life, um, you know, and then eventually, you know, probably ran chasing a dream, I would say, you know, come back from come back from uh, New York that time. Probably looking to try and get a fresh start because, uh, you know, probably missed home. Uh, I got to miss the football again and wanted back and I was. I was playing for. I actually was playing. Probably, well, I would have been in my prime. You know, I was in my late twenties, at the top of my game. Um, played well again, Galway. You know, played played again. Down got to the All Ireland final. Got back in the All Ireland final. We played them in a, in a challenge game. Uh, played real well again. Them started to see then that you know maybe I could threaten a, a county position again. You know, so. Was asked to come back home uh, and maybe give that another go. Decided to do it, you know. Um, but the head, you know, at that level, uh, at that level, a county football, your head needs to be completely right. You need to be in the right place. Um, and, you know, uh, I don't know what happened. Uh, I kind of had it in my head that I was going back to play at my club. You know, for a few different things didn't pan out. Uh, they were crosses in in all Ireland semi final. Uh, I had made contact even before also that I was coming home. But you know, the Tony was Tony McIntyre was over the team at the time, and Tony and Gary Neal and and. Um, he said, look at I was gonna to have to wait. Um and you know what? At that time uh, I didn't think that I had to wait. Uh but you know what, they were right. Uh, it was the right call to make. Um I couldn't see it at the time and, and 
I suppose I was a wee bit impatient. Um, I was given an opportunity, a job in Dublin, and and uh, the player Parnell's up there, and I did it. You know, uh, probably what another year, ask. What year was that, Johnny? That would have been uh, two thousand twelve. Twelve, right? Did you play for Parnells for long? I played for two seasons in Dublin. Um, yes, right, didn't know that. Yeah. Played for two seasons. Live was living up there and working up there. I was still with Arma. Uh, I was traveling up and down. Would have played with Cluxton and all. Wouldn't yeah, you? Cluxton. Yeah. Connor Mortimer did he play for Parnells and all years ago? Didn't yeah. he? Uh, yeah. Willie Parks did just out of being. Yeah, yeah, not a, yeah. A good, a good, a good plan, a good club up there. I suppose Johnny. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was look at it was it was a phenomenal. The, the caliber of football that was there, you know, I I didn't play with 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 Parkinson. Uh, he was gone the year before that, but Marts was there and and Glucko, um Colin Bagley from Leash, yeah, you know, yeah. Andrea, Andrea Style from Waxford, um, Darren Rooney used to play with Leash, yeah, um, Big Rue was there, phenomenal footballer, um, there was loads of guys, there was loads of talent, um, you know, so there was. It, I, I suppose the experience uh, alone, John. Um, I absolutely love Dublin football. I I I love the, how competitive it was. The Dublin club football. Um, you know, it, it it was tough. It was uh, every team was conditioned. Um, it was top level stuff. You you know that the, the you know, the amount of teams in Dublin with the standard of play or there was guys playing from all over Ireland in it. Yeah. Um, you know, so from that aspect of it and what I learned, um, and again, I was I was at the top of my prime uh, playing up there and enjoying it. And, you know, things is real quiet in the country, you know, whereas up there, you know, you had it. We had a penthouse apartment. We were, you know, we were well looked after. We were, you know, into coppers. You had the gold cards. You had <laughs> laughing. Whatever, whatever you wanted into Flannery's, you know. Yeah, yeah. Listen, the crack, you know, for that couple of years, um, with Dublin club football and all was 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 unbelievable. I was lucky enough. I was lucky enough, even though, you know, Parnells hasn't won a Dublin. A Dublin championship in years, but I was lucky enough to 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 do well in the in the in the, in the Dublin club championship. Um, I got a I got a blue star award, and um, when when Dublin won all Ireland that time, where Clucko kicked the winner again, Kerry. Um, Two thousand eleven. The blue stars every year gets to play Dublin in, in a game on New Year's Day, so they were the all Ireland champions, and and um, I I was lucky enough to make the blue star team to play them, you know, yeah. so. You know, um, my uncle, my uncle Dole would have given me a bit of stick. You know that oh, he says, you know, Arma was Division One at the time. Um, I never we were playing Dublin down the ladder grounds, and he and and he said to me, oh, he, no, he says you're you're too small. He says play against them boys, you know. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, him, he was actually at that game, and, and I kicked three points, and I says to him after the game, you know, I says, yeah, I didn't do too bad for someone too small to play against them, you know. So <laughs> we we had that bit of crack, and he just roared laughing, you know. He was he, he was taking the piss, but um, look at uh, I look at uh, I had I, I had that regret uh, with Cross Midland, uh, I definitely did, uh, and I'll always have it. Um. I remember sitting whenever Bridget's uh, Bridget's Palace uh, cross was going for three in a row, uh, and and so Bridget's Palace in 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 All Ireland semi final, it was very controversial. I remember sitting in the crowd, and I was stripping teeth at the game. Um, we uh, we Kelly Carr got 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 caught rotten and got sent off for absolutely nothing. The goalkeeper made it. Made a complete meal out of it. Um, what do you call the famous goalkeeper from from uh, Curran, Is it Shane Curran? Shane Curran. Yeah. Hick. Hick, Shane, yeah. 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 He uh, he he done Kyle up like a kipper and, and got him sent off. And then I 
as soon as the ref showed the, the red card, he, he uh, Corn jumped up off the ground and ran 40 yards to the crowd and clicked his two heels together. You know, oh, oh my God, I was, abso- I was absolutely stripping teeth in the crowd. Yeah. And, and it's, 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 that is the biggest regret. That, that's it there. You know, for me, and I'll never forget it, uh, and I never, I never actually said to the guys, but the regret I had wasn't, wasn't really missing them two all Irelands at the one. The biggest regret I had was sitting in that crowd and knowing that you could do something about it mm. uh, and maybe get the guys over, the, help to get the guys over the line that day. Uh, and 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 push on for another All Ireland, um, to get to another All Ireland final. That you're sitting there in the crowd and you can only watch, mm. uh, uh, and knowing that maybe you could make it, make a difference, you know. So, and I suppose when I look back, that that on reflection on it, that is the one regret that I do have is that game, that incident, that time. Um, but hey, I'm clutching at straws, you know. Uh, um, I was entirely lucky in my career. Uh, club footballers, even some clubs go a lifetime, haven't even won a senior championship. Mm. So, to, I'm very privileged to have won what I have and compete at the top level. Um, so in that aspect, I'm, 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 I'm very lucky, but. I definitely, like I said, back to what I said, uh, I really wished I had a went and got myself a bit of help. Uh, it's not something I speak of. It's the first time I ever spoke of it. Me and you spoke about it off air. Mm. Um, and I did want to wait until I'm um, okay. Some of my friends that know me would, you know, we would chat about it, but I did want to, uh, I did want to wait a certain period of time till I, till I, till I was in the straight and narrow before I could. I could even chat about it, uh, and you know, not things change as well, John. You know, like these days, you know, like the missus's family there, or, or dad would be fond of watching a, maybe a big race at Cheltenham or Aintree or something like that there, and at Christmas there, you know, some of them festivals was on, whatever's on, you know, at, at Campton or whatever it is on Boxing Day, you know, and now I can actually sit and watch this. And watch the race for what it is. Yeah. Um, can I put myself in the position? I don't put myself in the positions uh, that much anymore. You know, I, I, I wouldn't like to put myself in a position. You know, those stag parties that guys went racing and stuff yeah. like that. I, I, I removed myself and didn't go. Or, you know, a, a friend of mine from Tyrone sent me a message about a stag party. And, they're thinking of going to Newcastle or Liverpool, maybe now in a couple of months for a stag party. Um, no, I'll not put myself in that position, you know, uh, just in case, you know. So I will I still to be conscious about scenarios I put myself into. Um, you know, you, we'd have a saying, you know, when we, when we were in there in, in, in rehab, if you stay long enough in the hairdressers, you're going to get a haircut. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, true enough. Yeah, so um, you know, you, the thing about it, you have to change Everton, you have to change people, you have to change places, you have to change things. Um, you know, uh, I had a lot of, I was very close with a good few of the guys, even some of, some of the ex players. You know, they would like, they they would enjoy a social bet. I couldn't do a social bet, you know, so. I had to remove myself from their company. It was very, very tough. It gets very hard at times. I, I chat to them every now and again, you know, but I had to do it for me uh, because I had to change uh, and change was needed. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very lucky I have a partner who stood by me the whole time and, you know, probably should have lost her now, to be honest. Um, and that is that is one gamble I wasn't going to take again. Um, so, you know, between that and and effectively, you know, you, you're putting your you're putting yourself in a position where you're gambling with your life. Um, so um, I'm lucky I can say that I don't have that issue today. And 
Hopefully, I'll not have it tomorrow. Just definitely, Johnny, definitely. Like, are we talking with, kind of with the betting thing and bits and pieces? And we've seen Conkle Patrick literally come out uh, two weeks after winning the All Ireland uh, title for our throne last year, and he was on the Clare Bourne show and he was very open and honest with his situation with betting. Are we, with your situation, Johnny, are we talking near debt experience in terms of uh, like kind of being in terms of you know own, owning money? Are we talking when you're putting on money on a horse, a couple of hundred thousands, or like are we talking how, what the figures are we kind of what kind of figures are we talking? Well, listen, you know, uh, I, I wouldn't make a, a habit of figures. Um, you know, what what young Fitzpatrick could maybe Kilpatrick could maybe uh, could maybe lose or could maybe get on. You know, it it's like I said to you there about the cards and different places. It brings you to crazy places and crazy things. Some of it's exciting and some of it isn't. Um, you know, it gets to the stage where you're putting on a, a bets, you have a lane, you have credit, you have whatever. Um, there's no feeling. The feeling is gone. That's the end game. That's what happens. It's numbness. It's it's raw. Um, and eventually, it's your life. That's what you're gambling with. You will, if you keep going, you know, we have, an, we have another saying in GA that, that, you know, the trap door, you think you're at rock bottom and then there's a trap door in under you. It'll, you can always go lower. You can always find a bigger problem, you know. And one thing about a gambler, a gambler can rustle money up like that. Yeah. If a gambler needs to put on a bet, whatever the size, he can do it. Yeah. He can... He can do or tell whatever story or do what he has to do or, you know, but it's the whole other aspects that comes with gambling. You're not just a compulsive gambler, you're a compulsive liar. Liar, yeah, yeah. You know, you're, you're Everton, whatever it is or how small it is, you risk it, you know, it, it, it doesn't end, you know. Um, you know, so in... in, in I suppose the comfort, the comfort in it today is that, you know, I'm not running from anything. I'm not looking over my shoulder. Um, do I have some problems? I'm still trying to tidy up. Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. Um, you know, I, I, had, I had different issues that the different problems that I had to deal with from a recession, as well that had nothing to do with gambling. Um. But it was added pressure brought on to me that I tried to gamble my way out of it and it was never going to happen. So look, at I've, I've, I've learned to, like I said, I'm a good partner and I've learned to, to deal with things a certain way, but I definitely couldn't have done it um, without Kuhn Moore and the, the, the Rehabilitation Centre, the Personal Development Programme. And I would, I, I would wish, even to be honest with you, they should be doing the person development programs in school. A hundred percent. Yeah. Even mental health awareness, uh, betting problems. Like there should be so much more done, Johnny. Like, and it's just not legislated for really at all. Yeah, absolutely not legislated for. Uh, you know, you, you can't even learn in school how to fill out a tax form. So what chance? What 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 hope have you got of trying to deal with your mental health issues? Um, so many useless subjects in school as well. Yeah, so uh, I definitely think a personal development programs in schools would be an amazing start. And you know, uh, a big a, a big issue that I'm noticing, you know, from younger lads now is is is, is the drug problem. Um, oh gosh, yeah, it's it's it's, it's funny you highlight that because like I have a Cavan club kind of championship. Um, yeah, he, he's all with me. Like he's he's giving me ham with these podcasts, and he said like it's it's very rampant in Cavan. So I don't know your neck of the woods, is it? <laughs> it's, it, it it's, it's rampant in 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 every small yeah, village right. town all over Ireland. Um, no matter what size of the village in Ireland you go, way down the west, yeah, it'll it, it'll be a problem there too. And and it's just it's just the way society has gone. Um. And I, you know, I, I honestly believe that these programs, you know, could actually help so many young players um, yeah. coming up through the ranks there at the minute. And, and 
listen, if any young player is watching, uh, I, I would my appeal would be to them is to the best decision in life you'll make is better on yourself. Yeah. Uh, and, and and doing a personal development program. Whether you have addiction or not, I can tell you it it'll it'll sharpen you right up and bring out the best in you. Um and like I said, it, it's a decision I wished I had made earlier in my football career and would have had me focused to 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 deliver on a on a on a better and bigger way. Definitely, Johnny. Yeah, no sure words than that. And I suppose how important was it for you to kind of open up and talk and to kind of share your story? And as you're sharing your story right now, and obviously if you didn't seek help, the problem could be worse. You could be still looking at a gambling addiction and bits and pieces of your daily existence could be a lot worse. So, Johnny, how important it was for you to speak up and get help, I suppose, is what I'm getting at. Well, it's 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 the most important thing about it is structure. Um, yeah. I've learned to give I've learned structure. Um and again, I've been very lucky with my partner. It was fit the deal, you know. She's she does accounts and book work, and and she's a extremely savvy woman, and I'm very lucky to have her. Um, so I am blessed to have a backbone like that, uh, and someone with the full to give give you a full support. Um, because there's, there's so many people has to do it on their own, you know. Uh, and yes, they have families and and different things like that, but. You need you need you need you need someone who's going to understand, someone that knows the real you. Um, you know, so listen. It's one of the things uh, that actually I you know it's one of the things I've brought through as a manager. I would say it in players. I would meet players all the time for different times for coffees or whatever it is. Have a coffee and a sit down, and I wouldn't. We wouldn't even, you know. The odd time addiction might come up, and um, most of the time it's just about the player himself and the player's own well-being, yeah. um, and what he thinks about his game. So, from that aspect of it, of 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 my past, it really helps me moving forward, um, and my, uh, towards my player management skills. And and uh, yeah, I'm glad I can I can give back a certain way. Johnny, definitely, definitely. And I suppose when you kind of look back on your kind of footballing career, like how proud are you all of it, uh, Johnny? Because obviously you have you kind of had your things in the past and bits and pieces, and obviously you, you played uh, for Parnells in Dublin, Cross McGlen and Armagh. So, look, how proud are you of all that achievements? And I know you kind of said that you could have seek, seek help earlier and got the required help that you did did want, but you know, for all you tagged on for Armagh and Cross McGlen, uh, Johnny, it's no mean feat. No, no. Like I said, I'm I'm extremely privileged and lucky to have the career that I had. Um, because like I said, there's 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 players up and down the country has give so much and 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 they, they can't they just can't get over the line to win a, a a county medal, you know. So I am extremely privileged and lucky. Um, but I suppose like any career, when you're looking back, you 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 will just it's just natural to have a wee better you have regret at a certain stage. Um, and I don't think it matters really who the player is or how good he was or how good his career. He's always going to have something that will <laughs> that will annoy him that he'll have to that he'll have to pick at. So uh, a bit of a scab as such. But um, look at uh, uh, that is the only really thing that that I suppose I suppose that my own club didn't get the best out of me, um, which is probably. Which is probably the biggest regret, but but uh, like I said, you know, hopefully I can, in some capacity, um, I I'll be fit to give back at some stage again. And I suppose kind of a word on like the kind of the the commitment that uh, Cross Glen did bring to your life, and obviously we did, we all have seen kind of documentary and like the success that he's had, the winning culture that you had. What was it kind of like to be part of that, Johnny? Because obviously, like as I said at the start of the podcast, you're playing with probably some of the best club players we have seen in recent years, Johnny. So what was like that winning mentality and I suppose that kind of drive, determination that uh, did bring to your life, Johnny? Yeah, well, the the, the game um, for my started off on on the on the cross senior panel but Joe Joe brought us in just before he moved on um, and you know that that was an older an older team big strong powerhouse of a team um, they, they had won three All-Irelands themselves 
you know, but there were different, there were different type of beast, um, and and as as cross went over the years, the style of play changed with our personnel, and and that was one of the things I really enjoyed about 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 cross was the fact that we were fit to adapt and change and got more into a hard running game, um, and playing that top class. I I, I probably felt that, you know. Probably from the years, probably from the years, maybe around oh seven to probably fourteen or fifteen, that 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 football at that time was so enjoyable. It was, it was, it was a wee bit different. It was more tailored and and far fitter game than 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 we would have played on the earlier ends. Um, but then again, your personnel and the size of your team dictates that. Um, but it was that game, yeah. That that game we played with that cross field ball and moving the ball at pace out of defence was such an enjoyable game. Um, and I suppose that that aspect of 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 would have been where we're at. You know, uh, the game has evolved now. Obviously, it's changed. It's more structured. Um, and I would like to see how well we could adapt. Uh, some of the strong teams that we had, how we could adapt to the way the game has been played now. Yeah. Even though, like I said earlier, I do think it's tapered back a wee bit. I don't think the club football scene is just as strong as it was. Yeah. Um, but it definitely is uh, very tailored uh, and very technical. Um, and I think that's probably the way club football is going to go for the foreseeable future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely, Johnny. Definitely, unless there's uh, any kind of change. And obviously, the uh, documentary that I'm kind of piping on about the last uh, couple of minutes, uh, Johnny was back in 2016, and Thomas Diblock came in, and it was very personal, it was very up close, and it you know, just followed your her, your whole journey and bits and pieces. And obviously, uh, yourself and Oshin had a few words throughout. It was it was it was just intriguing stuff, Johnny. And from probably from minute one, it's just an absolutely essential watch, Johnny. So, what was all that like for you? Oh, listen, the experience of it, and like. The cameras, the cameras going around for two years. Um, so you know it's a small snippet of a show. You don't know what you know what they're going to put into it from all that camera action and footage, and you know. <coughs> but it was a look at. It was a good laugh. Um, uh, the, if you want to call me the bad boy or the character or <laughs> whatever it is, <coughs> it was it was it was done well. Um, it was done well, but. You know, it it it's a simple story to tell. You know, never never let the truth get in the way of a good story. You know, so you know what 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 what, what that's what we were saying off air as well. What people don't realise is that I uh, I trained that morning. Um, I was going to the All Ireland final. Myself and one of the other players, we we had planned for ages. We were going to go up to Saturday night, stay, go to the All Ireland final. Um, and Ashin said we we had the club championship the following week and the first round of the championship. And Ashin says, "Look, lads, will you not go up? We're training on Sunday morning, nine o'clock. Sure, we want you to train there first, and then she can go on up to the All Ireland final." So that's what we done. And then of course, you know, we stayed up the Sunday night. We went to Coppers after the game. <laughs> we had a bit of crack, you know, and and. Uh, and Ashin, <laughs> Ashin showed me this picture. He goes to me, "Oh, there's somebody sent me a picture of you and Coppers doing doing shots at the bar with a couple of other players, you know, from from you know." So look at um, listen, you're 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 caught red-handed. Uh, I, listen, to be brutally honest, I don't put on drink bands. I don't believe in them. Yeah. As I said earlier, you know, I think if a player's training hard enough and 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 even that week of the championship, I turned up Tuesday night to train. And I I uh, I put myself into the ground to train and to get all the badness out of me and 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 to show that, you know, the few drinks or whatever it was that they could fidget out of me. But um, look at on reflection, I suppose that at the end of the day, I was still wrong. The the, the rule was put in place because the management believed it. And 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 whatever about me and okay, you know, 
different people have said to me, oh, it was harsh, it was blah, blah, whatever. But, well, you know, the rule's there for everyone. So if, if the management believes that the rule is called for, you know, I should have been big enough to stand up to the rule. And um, because what I was forgetting at the time, and it's only now as a, 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 when I'm managing teams, I can understand is that, you know, it's not about me. You know, there's so many different other personalities, other guys is making the sacrifice. Mm. You know, so okay, it might have been the first round of a championship, and we won the game by twenty plus points. You know, the following week, but it's 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 a principle of the rest of it. You yeah. Know? So, and and I would be that's why you know, I would be flexible, and I would I wouldn't like to put myself in a position to have to have my own hands tied. Um, and that's 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 the reason why I don't impose it as a manager. Mm. Um, but each to their own, you know. We uh, we did have a couple of wild bunch on that uh, on that panel. Um, you know, like any like any good team, you you you'll have a you'll have a few characters, and I believe every good team needs them characters. Of course, yeah. They need they need the unpredictable guys. Um, you know, there's a guy wouldn't mind me saying un, unpredictable. You know, Johnny Harney, for example. Um, and Johnny was Johnny was un, unreplaceable uh, for the last couple of years for Cross. A big, big, massive miss. And them, and them last couple of championships, as a prime example, if if, if Johnny was there and he was fit. What he wouldn't give you uh, on the field, and that's an example of a player who, you know, Johnny could go and party with the rest. Was the best you ever seen, but I tell you what, when you're when you're in there in the trenches, uh, there's nobody come out swinging like Johnny Hannity. Um, he's the biggest heart and and will put in the biggest effort of, among anybody, uh, and that is you have to know. And that's one of the things as a manager uh, I, I, I think is very important for me going forward is that I have to know my characters. I have to know him, 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 him yeah. and separate them. Yeah. Uh, I know your individuals and this guy over here might need a wee bit of leeway. This man doesn't. This man needs a kick in the ass. This man needs the arm around the shoulder. And there's no one all them their characters. Uh, and that's what I love about the game. That's what I love about management. Um, so, uh, back to the documentary, yeah. yeah I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and it was a great lesson and <laughs> a great education for myself going forward anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, Johnny, I loved it. I think it's great TV and more GA documentaries like that. If anyone's watching any production people, please, please more. Uh, Thomas Diblock, if you're watching, get get them sorted, get them out. It, it'd be it'd be uh, great, uh, great from all point of view. Um, Johnny, you've been absolutely brilliant with your time. Um, uh, to wrap up, who would have been nice easy one for you? Uh, who would have been the best player you played with and the toughest player you played against? Yeah, I like to say you say a nice easy one. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> the best player best player I played with the best player I played with Jesus that's a question Um, it's not something I ever thought about would you believe I probably I would be torn between Probably torn between Oshin McConville and and, and, and and Stephen Cluxon. And I would probably I was gonna say for skill wise, but I know lefty's hard to beat for skill too. Um <laughs> I would probably just share it with Oshin McConville. Um, he wasn't bad, Johnny, he was okay, wasn't he? <laughs> I'd share it. I'd share it. I would. I'd, I'd share it for Ashin, um because of his arrogance. <laughs> 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 uh, 
because of, because of his arrogance and because he threw me under the bus. Uh, and, <laughs> and, um, but even though he threw me under the bus, I, I'd have to be honest and say, uh, yeah, I'd, 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 I'd tip me hat dashing on that regard. Yeah, absolutely. Just, 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 just shading it over Cluxon because he's a goalkeeper, you know. But yeah. I wouldn't like, you know, the way I let I let Paul Herty, the way he's in the old goalkeepers union. So, yeah, yeah. You know, he he he. Uh, I let the like of him pick pick goalies, but I I go for Ashton Campbell. Uh, what about the toughest player you played against? Toughest player I played against. Someone from Cav and Johnny Rudd. <laughs> Did you ever play us? Uh, I did, yeah, yeah. Played, you probably played Calvin Gales before Johnny, did you? I played against Calvin Gales. Um, Jesus, I, uh, the toughest player I played against. Uh, tell you who's. I tell you who's a hell of a tough player. Um, to play against and we had we, and it's only for the reason um that we had ferocious battles with them mm. uh, and, and cross cross and whenever we we would have been at our prime um when we done 13 in a row we had ferocious ferocious battles with drum and tea mm. and a hell of a tough player would be needing a rock oh yeah hell of a tough player um you know there was different different players, and you know even up in up in Dublin, you know the Philly McMahons and the Jerry Brennans, and you know you have all these you know tough tough players, like we spoke about Rory O'Carroll earlier, yeah. you know. But I'm still going to say I'm going to say Aidan O'Rourke is a hell of a tough player, tough. You know he could mix it up. No matter what way, you know, and if you weren't careful, you know, he was a he was a few a good few years older than me, and I knew, I knew whenever he was circling, you nearly sent him coming behind you, playing centre half back, and I was at twelve, you know, and sometimes he would pick me up, you know, I knew not to stand still for too long or <laughs> I'd be left very so, um, yeah. so uh, I I leaned towards Aidan O'Rourke. And very, very last one, Johnny. Uh, what advice would you give maybe a young Johnny Mur- Johnny Mortis st- uh, starting off, maybe trying to make that breakthrough onto the county, or even general life advice, uh, Johnny? Because of course you have been through maybe your own story. So, I suppose a bit of uh, life advice to anyone looking on. Well, if it's a young a young player like me, uh, um, I'll definitely tell him to get himself a rehabilitation program. <laughs> Can you hear me there? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, super. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, definitely do a personal development program. It'd be for any young player. Um, no, no, no. Look at what. I, what I would say to any young players is the most important aspect of it is enjoy your game, enjoy your surroundings, and be very well and and and, and in yourself. Um, and. Don't take it too seriously. Yeah. Um, but enjoy it for what it is, and enjoy it when it's there because it does. No matter older guys say to you, "Oh, it went so quick, it's gone," and you take it for granted, and it really is. You don't know how long you're going to be playing, how long it's going to be there, and definitely the good times. You don't know how long they're going to last. So enjoy every minute of it because uh, when it's gone, it's gone. There we go. Johnny Morta. Absolute privilege uh, to be joined by you this week. It was, it was a fantastic chat. I feel there's another hour probably in you, but uh, <laughs> there's uh, times up the essence. Cabin's playing that gets, that gets thrown, so I, uh, I'm, I'm in for a bit of torture tonight now, but we'll wait and see. Fingers crossed for the cabinets. Johnny, thanks a million for joining me this week. And of course, this podcast is sponsored by orgretcher.com and the fact that he uses my promo code JMAC podcast to get 15% off on orgretcher.com and get the best skins, gloves, and equipment on attack that he be attack minded. And if you like what you're seeing, uh, like, subscribe to YouTube because the support's been absolutely fantastic so far. Johnny, thanks a million, sir. Cheers, John. Thanks very much. Cheers, bud.